Hi everybody, this will be part three of the solar system animation tutorial series. In this video we're going to talk about how to set up our objects so that they can all animate properly. Primarily we're going to move the pivot points for all of our objects so that they can rotate or move how we want them to. So in this animation we're going to want all of the planets to rotate around the sun in a circular uh, standpoint. Uh, our real world counterpart of how planets orbit is really elliptical but to simplify this a little bit while also getting a pretty realistic looking animation we're going to have circular orbits uh, to make it easier for us to animate so each planet is going to rotate around the sun uh, the moon is going to rotate around the earth uh, so we're going to have four types of animation here we're going to have a rotate animation which is going to be the planets rotating around we're going to have a scale animation, which is going to be like the sun pulsating. So we're going to do something like this over time. Uh, we're going to have a movement animation, which is going to be our asteroid moving throughout the scene. And then we're going to have what's called a path constraint animation, where we select an object and the motion of that object is going to be controlled by a curve. So this object is going to follow along the curve, kind of like a roller coaster would follow along its track. So the spaceship is going to be our path constraint animation. So we just want to make sure that we set up our motion properly uh, or objects properly so that they can animate successfully. So the sun for the scale we're going to leave the pivot point in the center of the sun and that's going to work properly for us. Uh, one thing I am going to do for the sun is make sure I freeze the transformations. Good thing to do before we start animating any object is to delete the history. So if I take the sun there currently is no history on here but if I take the sun and go to edit delete by type history that kills off any other previous history that could cause issues in animating. The second thing to do is to freeze the transforms when I can do that. Um, so for the sun I want to reset my scale values back to 1 and to do that I'm going to select the sun and go to modify freeze transformations. That puts the scale for the sun back to 1 and that's going to allow me to pulsate it up and down in a scale standpoint pretty easily. Okay, for my planets, I'm not going to need a translator to rotate them, so there's no reason for me to freeze the transforms other than if for some reason you have rotated your planets, uh, then that might be a good reason to freeze the transforms. So what we need to do for each planet is I can't rotate each planet right now uh, individually and also rotate it around the sun. So we're not going to do revolutions around itself on its own axis uh, because this is going to be a camera view that's more panned out so we're not going to be able to see really close up to each planet. They're going to be moving pretty fast. You can set it up with individual uh, revolutions around its own axis but we're just going to do an orbit uh, revolution around the sun. So in order for this to work properly I'm going to hide my sun for a minute, control H, and I'm going to use the center of the grid here. So there's the center of the grid. What I need to do is take my pivot point and rotate or rotate my object around the sun. So I'm going to take the pivot point and move the pivot point to the center of the grid, which is where the center of the sun is. So to access an object's pivot point, I'm going to select the object and hit the D key, D for dog, uh, the D key. And then that allows me to move that pivot point wherever I want to. Now I'm going to use the snap to grid button, which is holding down X. So if I hold down X and then move that pivot point, that will snap to the grid. And what I want this to do is to snap to the center of the grid. So the first idea is select the object and hit the D key to get into pivot mode. And then hold down X and snap it to the center of the grid. We're going to do that for every planet. So we only have one selected at a time. Okay. Hit the D key, hold down X, snap this to the center of the grid. I'm going to skip over the Earth for a second. We'll come back to that one. Here's Mars. Hold it, hit the D key, hold down the X key, Whoops. and snap to the center of the grid. Okay, so every planet we want to do this. Whoops, D key, snap to the center of the grid. Um, Here's Saturn, snap to the center of the grid. Okay, so it might be a little difficult to get all of the ones further out. 
So what I typically do is try to move it close and then make sure it is in the right spot. This is um, Neptune. Move that one over. Yep, we're good there. And then the last one is Pluto. Yep, we're in the center there. Okay. So each one of our planets pivot points need to be moved to the center of the grid, which is where the sun is. All right. Before I move the Earth to the center, the Earth's pivot to the center of the sun, I need to first move. Whoops. Get out of whatever's going on there. Um, I first need to move. Let's see the center of this pivot because it messed it up by accident there. There we go. Let's just see if I can undo. Okay, there we go. All right, I just undid too far here, so let me catch back up. Hold down X, snap that back there, okay. This one, hold down X and snap that there. All right, there we go. All right. So first I need the moon to orbit around the Earth. Let me hide my Earth clouds for a second. I need to snap uh, the moon to the pivot point of the Earth. And the way to do this is to first select the Earth. And we're going to go to Display, Transform Display, Rotate Pivots. What that does is in wireframe mode, so I've hit 4 to go into wireframe mode, that green circle right there, move it a little bit, that green dot, that's the center pivot point of the Earth. Okay. So transform pivots on the Earth object allows me to be able to see that pivot point when the object's not selected. And then now with the Earth Moon, I can hit the D key and I'm going to hold down V this time, V to snap to point. I'm going to snap the Moon's pivot to the center of the Earth, so that green uh, target or uh, circle that's in the center of the Earth. Okay. So before I move the Earth's pivot point to the center of the Sun, I need to move the Moon's pivot point to, to the center of the Earth. Okay, so now what I can do with the Earth is go back to Display, Transform Display, and click Rotate Pivot. That turns off that Rotate Pivot visibility. All right, I'm going to unhide Earth's clouds. Let's go back to our textured view. Okay. So uh, now I can take the Earth and hit the D key to go into pivot mode, hold down X and snap the Earth's pivot to the center of the sun. I'm going to keep Earth's clouds at the center of the Earth so those can orbit or circulate around the Earth from its central axis. Okay, so now we can unhide the sun. So each planet's pivot, when you select it, should now be in the center of the sun. So one other thing we're going to do before we set up animation is do some parenting. So that way when the Earth rotates, the clouds will rotate with the Earth. And when the Earth rotates, the Earth's moon will rotate with the Earth. So we simply will do a parent-to-child relationship. And to do that, we're going to select the Earth clouds and then in the outliner, hold down control and click on the Earth. And then I'm going to hit the P key, P for parent. So what that does is it puts a plus symbol besides the Earth and it indents the Earth clouds underneath the Earth. So what that means is when I rotate my Earth, Earth's clouds will rotate with it. But I can also still select Earth's clouds and rotate them individually. So we set up parenting for uh, motion. We're not going to combine or boolean things together because we can't animate the sub-objects individually there. So we're going to do the same thing for the Earth's moon. I'm going to select the Earth's moon. I'm going to hold down control and click on the Earth and hit P for parent. So that's going to put Earth's moon and Earth clouds indented kind of bullet to point underneath the Earth. So that way when the Earth rotates the Earth's moon and the Earth's clouds will rotate with it. All right, so that hierarchy setup is called parenting. Uh, you select the child first, then shift select or control select the what will be the parent and hit the P key, P for parent. 
We're going to scroll out and do the same thing for Saturn's ring. So that way when Saturn rotates, the rings will rotate with it. So I'm going to select the rings and then hold down control and click on the Saturn planet and hit P for parent. So there's a hierarchy for Saturn. When Saturn rotates, the rings will rotate with it. Right. So a couple things we do to set up things for motion properly is move pivot points. Uh, where we want the object to rotate or move based off of and then set up parenting. A couple of things we've talked about already is to delete the history so we need to do that with our spaceship object. So we're going to do edit delete by type history and then the second thing I'm going to do here to remove out any transforms is to go to modify freeze transformations. Okay, there you go. Uh, I don't particularly need to do that for the Asteroid you could, but I'm going to leave the asteroid with its transforms on there. So now we're ready to animate. Uh, next video we'll talk about how to animate the planets orbiting around the sun.